Sony Alpha Rumors came out with the specs, you know, supposedly a spec leak for the Sony A7R5. Uh, so here, we'll talk about it. I had been covering the different spec leaks as they were coming out about the Sony A7R5. Uh, we talked about the leaked image, the possible leaked image. That turned out that was fake. Then we got a, a thing from Sony Alpha Rumors themselves saying it was coming from a very good source that it was going to be a new, brand new sensor that was 63 megapixels or around 63 megapixels. But it was new sensor. To me, that was very exciting. It was confusing at first because the 61 megapixel sensor that they have on hand seemed like, you know, it's still a pretty decent sensor. But it excited me because I thought if they're not going to be raising the megapixel count in any real significant way, then for them to raise it even a bit or change the sensor means that they have some new tech that's really going into this sensor. I was hoping and thinking possibly for the... Um, basically the double light saturation stacked sensor. That was my hopes. I was just thinking whatever it was for them to, you know, make a new sensor out of this thing, but keep it at the same megapixel count, essentially, that it must be something special. Then the next day, uh, that was somewhat redacted again. And Sony Alpha Rumors um, came out with uh, these new specs and I'll talk about it. I'm I'm a little bit disappointed. So here we go. Uh, this is from Sony Alpha Rumors. So the new specs are, it says it's the same 61 megapixel sensor because all the power goes to the new processor. Okay. Basically, is kind of what we thought from the beginning or what we, to me, was the downside scenario that it was just going to be a new processor in it and some new quality of life. I mean, the sensor is pretty good on that thing, but at this point, it's like you want something a little different. That sounds like marketing talk. Yeah, you're going to have a new processor. Uh, total, totally new autofocusing system with AI deep learning. To me, this is market jar marketing jargon. This sounds like they don't have much new to offer in my mind. I hope, it's, I hope I'm wrong and there's really something new, but Sony's autofocus has been great for a long time. So... Um, yeah, it's great if they add more subjects to detect, and that's what it sounds like. They're going to be able to track all kinds of different stuff, or you know, it's going to be able to recognize the supposedly what it trains and all this different stuff, maybe. Um, but that's nothing new in the camera industry. Maybe they're going to do it better than everybody else, but to act like this is like something brand new here, we'll see. Um, I hope I'm wrong. Four K twenty four cropped. Yes. Makes sense, uh, but I think it's 4K 30, I would assume. The 4K 60 full readout, um, that's a little bit confusing because are they saying that it's going to be the full readout of the sensor? I mean, you can get the, I don't know where I cut off on the stream, so that's why I want to go back over this. Um, is this meaning that it's going to downsample from that 9K or whatever it's going to be? Um, or does that mean it's going to be pixel bending? I think pixel bending is uh, the likely thing. It's still going to get a full, whatever, the full size readout. As Cine Tone makes sense too. So this is the other interesting part that I was getting to, and then we had a mess up here with the internet. Hopefully it's back on. Uh, be filling out the chat if you're here. If you're, if you're here and you're watching, listening, I appreciate you all watching and listening. Uh, hit that like button, and we'll get this out to more people and get a more robust, robust conversation going here in a minute. Okay, uh, eight stops of IBIS. Unclear yet if it's native or with gyro data. So I don't know what is the current stop of IBIS with the gyro data. Uh, because I would assume that it's, I don't know if it's eight stops, but I mean it's nuts. Uh, when you have Catalyst Browse on, if you're doing that like later on with Catalyst Browse, I wouldn't be surprised if it's at eight stops already. Uh, so, so to me, like this sounds awesome. Um... And it sounds like what, what uh, Canon has done a little bit, that would be great if uh, that's in, you know, actually native to the camera. Uh, I do hope that they don't have the wobbling situation as bad as what uh, Canon had with the R5. I feel like that's one of the biggest issues with the R5 is that weird wobble in the back. They did some stuff that they said they were going to uh, fix it, but didn't seem to fix it from what I've seen. Um, 
So the body looks uh, similar between, it uh, looks uh, like a mix between the A7S3 and the A7 IV. So I don't exactly know what that means because uh, they they look almost identical besides, I don't, well, how do you go between those? They're so similar. I mean, I get they have a slightly different um, dial on the top, but like, how do you go between those? Does the dial like, look halfway out of it. anyways that'll make sense to me maybe they have the same evf maybe that's part of it but that still doesn't change the the body so huh uh about the new autofocus system the new af system has a new ai processing unit for object recognition and human pose estimation it is also a hint for what is coming in the next generation of sports cameras because it recognizes cars trains planes insects on top of humans, animals, and birds, this is a completely new way. Yeah, this sounds marketing. And I'm not saying that, that Andre is doing anything um, nefarious here, but he is a, a fanboy for sure, and I, I think he would agree with that. And he's not, not, I don't mean that in a derogatory term, I just love Sony. Obviously, he has Sony Alpha Room versus his website. Um so, and I, and I, I think he, his website, you know, overall, he's doing some great work. He has a YouTube channel. Go check him out over there. Um, but, um, you know, he's, he's a fanboy here. So he hears this, this is the spin that Sony's going to put on it. And maybe it is something new and great and whatever. I just think this sounds like BS marketing, uh, or, or maybe it's true marketing, but it sounds like, uh, to me, this sounds like a fairly minor update, uh, on, on different stuff, pose estimation. I, I don't even why. Why if you're going to be locking onto their eye pretty much perfectly, why do you need to estimate their pose? I don't. I, you're you're locking onto their eye, so uh, this sounds weird. I don't mind the idea of Sony going over to more computational photography type stuff, and that kind of sounds partially what they're doing here. Um, it's not really computational photography from this. It's the AI on the autofocusing stuff. I think that Sony and all camera manufacturers need to add more, you know, hardware, really uh, more software features into this thing and up the powerhouse. Uh, they, they had a, a people from, I think it was uh, Qualcomm that was talking about the new Snapdragon chip that was in the, in the new cameras and ba or in the new smartphones. He was basically saying it's 10 times the processing power that's in the latest cameras. And I have no doubt there's so much money that is getting uh, spent on these new smartphones that I don't understand how Sony and all the different companies, they're not getting access to those chips. Um, Sony has a great working relationship with um, Apple. If I was Sony right now, if I really wanted, I think that they make so much off their sensors that I'm not sure if they 100% care. But if I was Sony, I would be trying to figure out how to run one of those operating systems. How, how do I get access to uh, Apple's A15 Bionic chip and put that in here or whatever they're going to call it. What's their new one? A16 Bionic chip. How do, how do I get uh, one of maybe those M1 chips? I think that maybe that's a little bit too big and too much heat to put into a camera. But to me, those chips are light years ahead of what's in, in uh, Sony cameras. And, and maybe you, you disagree, but I think they're far ahead of uh, the chipsets that are in these things. And I would be interested to see how much they could push out of a camera uh, if you had a proper chip in it. Um, and you know, I, especially considering how big cameras are, like you would be able to dissipate the heat much better. Um, I don't know. I just think that uh, Sony's going to have to do more with that type of stuff and cameras in general, Canon, they're all going to have to do more on the computational side to start, I don't know, competing on a higher end. Of course, you got the optical situation going on with, with, uh, you know, DSLRs or, or mirrorless cameras. You have, you know, the lens, the optical, you have the bigger sensors. That's all great. It's hard to fight physics, but smartphones are starting to do a damn good job with AI. And I think uh, that's something worth looking into a lot more.